Every hour, a vintage computer suffers neglect. They sit collecting dust, never to be used. Owners recycle their corpses or throw them into landfills. Their tortured souls melted into precious metals. Screaming, together we can make a difference and help save our computer friends. They deserve good homes, so donate, sell, or save them. And today, with help from Amazon, we're going to build an <coughs> Windows 98 PC. Today we're building a Socket A Windows 98 PC and we're going to be using this Corsair TX650 power supply. They're asking why we're using a brand new, never opened old power supply. It's because it has a stronger 5 volt rail than standard modern ones do. As you can see here, 30 amps. It's also got a very nice bag, which is very important. Ah, look at that brick. It's great. The board we got here is a KTVA3 motherboard by ECS. Nothing special, but it's purple, so that's pretty neat. Be replacing the CPU with a 3200 plus Athlon XP. It's not 3.2 gigahertz, but it's cl close enough. The cooler is now secured. It has a lot of aesthetic. You can see why I chose it. Look at the colors. And then we've got a G4 6800 256 meg. Nice blue color. Sound Blaster out of G2ZS. Shiny. A random Intel Ethernet PCI card. A Linksys WMP54G. It's one of the few wireless cards that I know works in Windows 98 with WPA support. A Rosewill PCI SATA IDE controller card, just so we can get faster speeds out of the SSD. Now that all of our cards are installed, it's time to read the fucking manual. You can see um, our front panel connectors are illustrated nicely here. I've already plugged them in. Ah, it's nice looking. We've got our thick Windows 98 boot disk and uh, our OG Windows 98 disk. Looks like the system is happy. See the RGB. This card, however, was kind of dead, so we had to swap it out for a different 6800.
And now we're booting off the floppy disk. So we're partitioning it with fdisk. Once that's done, we're going to install the OS. Created all of our partitions. Just about. And then once that's all done, now that that's done, you can see it's using our uh, full hard drive space. Okay, so we're running this setup. It's going really fast, so I sped it up 5x just for time constraints. But you can see that it went like ridiculously quick to the point that I just chopped it um, so now the OS is installed so it's time to move our test bench to an actual location that it belongs in that's much better Now our Beige 3DFX Voodoo 2 SLI GeForce 4 system has a buddy. We aren't done though. I'm going to have to download the USB driver for this purple PC to actually get drivers loaded on. So I'm doing it the right way. We're going on the internet in um, Opera on the beige Windows 98 PC and navigating to Vogons uh, where we are able to download it. I threw it onto a floppy disk. The tool is called NUSB. Um, it's easily downloadable. I've linked it in the description. Okay, so now I've copied that file onto this floppy. We're going to put that into the purple system. Okay, we've thrown it onto the desktop. Let's see what it does. Okay, that's pretty quick. Alright, so now the USB driver is installed only do up to USB 2.0 speeds though. Alright, so I went to Vogons and I loaded a bunch of drivers onto this um, as well as the ECS website for the board. We got all the drivers organized, you'll see here. So I'm just going to copy that folder I'm just going to copy that folder over to the C drive. Did take a while because that's uh, several gigs worth of drivers. Alright. And now we have to actually install them. First we're going to install the graphics driver. I'm going to start with an older driver just for sake of consistency. Alright, so that's looking a lot prettier. Now our graphics aren't garbage anymore. Now we're gonna load our other drivers. So there's uh, there's an Ethernet driver that we need to throw in. 
We're gonna have to throw the disc in because Windows 98 sometimes needs the CD to load drivers. Okay, that worked. We got Ethernet loaded and then uh, the audio driver. Just going through device manager. So it looks like we have sound. Beautiful sounds. Now we have to load this Wi Fi driver. We're going to disregard these instructions and do it the wrong way. Okay, so now we're manually loading that driver into Device Manager and restarting one last time. Okay, that worked. Got it. Now we gotta load the Odyssey client, which is a way to add WPA and WPA2 support to Windows 98. However, it's saying we need Internet Explorer 6. Um, why would anyone want that? Well, we're gonna need it. So, I put that on the USB already. Installing Internet Explorer 6. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's done. Just about. And this is a new graphics card we had to put in because the other one was dead, as I said earlier. But it's basically the same card. It's still a 6800. Okay, and this is how you run the Odyssey thing. Okay, got it. It's loaded. Oh, wait, we actually have to restart one more time for Odyssey. Okay, and then we're going to load Virtual Clone Drive. Okay, got it. Minecraft works now. We, we got Java on here. Um, look at the beautiful Philosophier M2 keyboard in our Vanguard case. Oh, Minecraft. Oh, look at the frames per second it seems to be doing some weird lag but it's like the frames per second are going up as I play so um, I think it has something to do with this CPU being single core but it's acting as if it's a faster CPU impressive actually because I'm running this at full res, at least for this monitor. Not bad. And then we also have to install Trend Micro Antivirus. Okay. We did a test with the Rosewill versus the Promise controller that I used in the previous video on this system and uh, we got a lot faster speeds on, on the, the Promise one so I, I threw out the Rosewell one. Uh, Quake 3 runs incredible, double the FPS of Beige Buddy. Need for Speed Underground 2 runs at playable frame rates with the settings maxed. Sonic Adventure DX runs fluid. Doom 3 runs at playable frame rates at full res with high settings. Far Cry, however, runs at much better frame rates, sometimes even staying around 60. Some dips, though. Fantastic, though. Look at the beautiful graphics here. This is on high. Chips challenge runs at an alarming 10,000 FPS. My frame counter does not even work on this game.
SimCity looks really good on this computer. Um, there's not really any 3D acceleration there. Tetris runs like crack. Doki Doki Literature Club actually runs really fantastic, so we decided to play as Trump this time. We used a thing called Colonel X to get that one to run. Sonic 3D Blast runs perfectly. Half-Life 2 actually loads. We're getting playable FPS within Windows 98. Shocking. Gotta grab this milk. Serious Sam 2, I was able to force to run. This isn't really supposed to run. Colonel X 2019 Rev did somehow make this run. Um, and then Minecraft. Um, using the later Colonel X somehow made it run at like way more frames per second. This actually looks pretty playable. I could actually get used to this. So enjoy the spicy chiptune music while we see how the last few pivotal titles for Windows 98 run. Morrowind looks incredible. You have all the settings. Totally maxed out. Runs very smooth. Yeah, all the settings are totally maxed out. It runs perfectly. And we're dead. Croc just looks cool on this system due to the color scheme, so I just felt like testing it. And we got that spicy keyboard link in the description if you want to get one yourself. Sega Touring Car Championship runs fantastically and can actually work over the internet.
overall this build was a success. For Windows 98 it's way more than you'd ever need. And it runs Minecraft, which is strange. If you have any unusual hardware that you'd like me to take a look at or donate to the show, um, please reach out in the comments. 